books, books. I like books. I'm going to read them all. Hi readers, Chris here. Welcome to my channel where I review fantasy Stephen King, all sorts of books. And today I'm going to be talking about all sorts of books. And that is Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. If you've been with me for a while, you might know that R.F. Kuang has become one of my favorite authors, especially this year. So I have read her Poppy War series, and then I read Babel earlier this year. So I loved all of those books, and I loved Yellow Face too. I'm going to tell you why. So if you know nothing about Yellow Face, here's my, you know, super quick introduction. We have a girl. Her name is June. She has a best friend, Athena. Athena is an Asian American. June is white. They are both um, authors. They went to school for writing. They're kind of coming up in the business. But Athena's career has like taken off and June like published one book. It didn't go very well where Athena is a rising star. Certain things happen and Athena ends up passing away. It's not a spoiler. It's literally on the inside cover. It happens very early in the book. And then after Athena passes away, June finds one of her unpublished manuscripts. So June decides to take that manuscript and publish it under her own name. And what follows is this super deep exploration of the publishing industry, of what drives certain people to make decisions, what it means to be in the spotlight and how much of a drug that can be like. And that's just like the surface. That is the surface of the book. Because here's the thing. It's all told from June's perspective. It's all told through her mind. So we get her inner thoughts and feelings. What led her to take someone else's book and make it her own and publish it? What drives her to pretend to be Asian because she does? what drives her to make these decisions. And it's really, really, really fascinating. This is definitely a book, even though it's not that long, that I feel like I could talk about forever. So I'm just going to touch on the main things I like about this book. And I'm going to start with June. R.F. Kuang is no, um, does not shy away from difficult characters and unlikable characters. I said this about her Babel book, and June, the main character in this book, is very unlikable. Like, especially in the beginning, the thoughts that she has about Athena, this girl who's supposed to be her friend, like, the thoughts that she has about her, her knee-jerk reactions, her prejudices, her bias, her racism, dare I even say it, like it's really almost disturbing at times to be in her mind because you're like, how can people think like that? Like, but obviously there are people out there that do. So that's one thing. But then, you know, June's story as it goes throughout the book, it's really a roller coaster and you're either in for the ride or you aren't because I feel like Kwang does such a good job taking this character that on the surface seems despicable but I felt myself at certain times feeling bad for her because there are times during the book where June finds herself the subject of internet bullying and obviously that is a hot topic in today's culture like she gets quote unquote canceled and all the things that go along with that so for me personally i have the ability to both not like what someone's doing but also feel bad for someone that is getting death threats and feeling super depressed and dealing with anxiety because people are saying horrible things to her. Like, I think there's a point where we need to be able to, as a society, say, yes, you need to be held accountable for your actions, but also you need a chance to redeem yourself and you shouldn't just be like forced to off yourself because you can't deal with the hate. Like, I think both of those things need to be true. Unfortunately, they're not because the internet is a horrible and toxic place. 
I feel like most of us have all experienced some of that a little bit. So seeing June go through that, even though I know in my head, like, she's done this to herself, she's made these bad decisions, she's not a good person, does she really deserve all the things that are happening to her? I'm not here to say yes or no. I think you should read the book and make up your mind for yourself. But I love that Kwong is tackling this topic, which is a really tough topic. And again, I love that she's forcing you to think about these things because yes, of course, June should be canceled for the horrible things she does. But should she be torn down as a person so much that she can't live and function and like, be alive in society? I don't know. I don't know. It's a very interesting question. It's a tough question. And I personally loved reading about it. The second main thing I liked about this book is the way that it explores the publishing industry. I feel like a lot of us readers, we only see the finished product, the book. We don't see how the book came to be. And June and her success you know, starts to really get involved in the ins and outs of the industry, like how a bestseller becomes a bestseller, how they pick certain people to push for awards, to campaign for awards. What does it mean to have your book optioned to a movie or a TV show? Like she really gets in depth into the industry. And unfortunately, not all of it is like, sunshine and rainbows and lollipops. There's a couple things in here, a couple executives that June deals with that at first glance, it comes across as very shocking. And I've heard a couple people say this that have reviewed this book that kind of have the viewpoint of like, oh, that stuff can't possibly be true. Like it can't possibly be that bad. But I mean, honestly, my thought is it's probably way worse than she's explaining because at the end of the day, here's the thing. Let's take uh, Moro. That's the company that published this book. All of these publishing houses, they are a business. And what a business is there to do is to make money. So the business's number one goal is not to make you feel good about a book, not to publish your book to, you know, achieve your hopes and dreams. No, they want to make money off of you. They're only going to publish you and invest time and energy in you if they can make money off of you. Like that is the bottom line. That is the bottom line. And yes, that makes companies slightly psychopathic, I think. So some of the things that June goes through, like um, there's one point in the book where when she's working on like a second novel, someone says to her like, oh, we already have our diversity book like of this month. So we either have to push this book back or you have to change the tone and make it not as diverse, like something like that. Like I 100% believe that that probably happens in certain companies today. Like, I don't think that's very far-fetched at all. Again, if they don't think that they can market you and make money off of you, <laughs> that is their number one goal and their number one job. In fact, people's whole jobs is just focused on how to make money. That's what producers do. And it's basically there are producers for books that do the same type of thing. So even though some people find it shocking. I didn't find it shocking. I more found it interesting and eye-opening. And I hope that more people realize that like, this is what it's really like. And this is the crap for a better lack of a better term that you have to deal with. So number three is kind of similar to number one, but different. I talked a little bit about June and how she gets canceled on the internet, but there is a lot in this book that cover that talks about social media and the experience of being a public figure on social media and what it means to be like at the top of the pyramid to have everyone love you and flood your comments and give you this boost of serotonin and, and you're the it person. 
But then there's also the dark side because no one can stay on top forever and what goes up must come down. And yes, I think any of us here on the internet have experienced like, or at least seen what it's like when the internet takes a dark turn. And I think that Kwong does a really good job exploring that, like exploring the fact that a certain blogger that has a good following, you know, they can put out something into the world that may not even be true. And all of a sudden you have 500 people like attacking someone else just because one person said something like the power that these people have to either help someone else's career or completely destroy it is it's really insane and yes like that is the world that we live in today this is very timely all it takes is one person with a large following to say one bad thing and that could totally ruin your life and it may not even be true like i just i really liked that part of it i really liked that exploration and i hope that people that read this will step away thinking like I need to make up my own mind and I need to make my own decisions and I need to do a little bit more digging rather than just accepting everything at face value because anyone can say anything that doesn't make it true and just because something is true to me doesn't mean that something is true to you. So I think there's a lot of good life lessons in here in general and I would encourage anyone, if you are a fan of Kwong at all, if you liked the Poppy Wars, I think Yellowface is a bit easier to digest than Babel. Babel's a bit thicker of a book. It's historical. It's fantasy. This is a contemporary. And honestly, as soon as I started reading it, like, I could not put it down. It's almost a bit, a little bit like watching a car crash. Like, you know bad things are going to happen but you just cannot look away. So as I mentioned, yes, I could talk about this for hours, but I'm not going to. So just to wrap this up, the three things I liked most about this book are the main character, June. She's a super unlikable character, but I love reading about unlikable characters. Number two, it's exploration of the publishing industry and kind of the dark side of the industry. I love that stuff. I don't know why. And then number three, all of the life lessons around social media, the highs, the lows, and the dangers of being online. So that is it for me today. And I know uh, no ferrets today. I went to go look for them, but they're asleep and they're cuddled up all cute. So I didn't want to disturb them. So maybe in the next video. <laughs> but until then, now I want to know from you, have you read Yellow Face? Have you read any of Kwong's other books? Do you like books with unlikable characters? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel for more bookish stuff coming your way soon. All right, everyone. Happy reading.